Good morning. On to Genesis 5. Uh, we saw the effects of sin in the previous chapter, the very sad account of the, the murder of Abel by his brother Cain. And in Hebrews 12, 24, it talks about the blood of Christ speaking a better word for us than the blood of Abel. That is so true. The blood of Abel tells us of the effect of sin coming into the world, but the shedding of the blood of Christ is about the death of a sinless one for people who have decidedly violated God's law, which is all of us, and we, we need that perfect atoning sacrifice, the shed, of, shed blood of Christ for us. It does speak a better word for us. Now, in chapter 5, we have more of this account of the impact of Adam's sin on God's world. And what we see is death. Now, not just the death of one man, but we have generations of death. So we follow the line of Adam through Seth, now, who was mentioned at the end of chapter 4. We follow that line all the way to Noah, to the birth of Noah. And we have this account that tells us about the length of each life, but then also these very striking words repeated over and over again, and he died, and he died, and he died. And even though they had extremely long lives by today's standards prior to the flood, yet still, those are hard words to hear. And he died. So we're really struck when we come to someone in this genealogy whose life doesn't end with those words, and he died. And it, it, let me just read to you about Enoch, because what it says instead is that Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, we were struck in the previous chapter by the phrase, um, calling upon the name of the Lord. Well, this, were, this phrase, walked with God, is, is like that. It's, it's, it's really almost an extension of calling upon the name of the Lord, that you call upon the name of the Lord God in worship, but you don't let that relationship with God just end with the gathered calling upon God's name in song or in spoken prayer, but you live out that life now by walking with God. And this is a, a phrase that has to do with pleasing God and being in pleasant fellowship with God. And that is reflected in Hebrews 11, where we're told about this Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So what a great word for Enoch that this walking with God is relationship with God, believing that God exists. See, without faith, it's impossible to walk with God. So you have to believe that he exists and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Enoch believed in God. He sought God. He walked with God. And this can be your story and my story too. Why? Because the blood of Christ speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Now, the last thing I want to mention in this chapter is that it speaks of Noah. And this is what Noah's father says at the birth of his son. He says, out of the ground uh, that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. So there's this recognition at the end of chapter 5 that not only is death a sad reality in the world after the sin of Adam, but so is toil and work and not, not just good work. It's, it's that it seems like 
there's challenge in work that is almost too much for us. And what, what are we looking for? Relief. Where will we find this relief from a descendant of Noah who shed his blood for us and lives forever now uh, for us? Oh, Lord our God, thank you for the relief and rest that we have in Jesus, our Redeemer. Teach us today to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Every blessing on you. Yes, be blessed.